On April 23rd, 1982, Sinclair Research released a microcomputer which would go on to become Britain's best-selling microcomputer of all time. And that microcomputer was called the ZX Spectrum. The system sold over 5 million units during its life and led to the UK boom in software and hardware creation in personal computing. The ZX Spectrum was officially discontinued in 1992. However, the system is very much loved and recognized today around the world. It even earned its founder, the late St. Clive Sinclair, a knighthood in 1983 for his contributions to the personal computer industry in the UK. I recently bought this ZX Spectrum at the Retro Games Fair in Leeds, part of a deal which included the ZX Spectrum and its competitor at the time, the Acorn Electron, for £50. This ZX Spectrum is not in the best condition. It's dirty, has a few faults, for example a power issue, and the keyboard cover is almost coming off. For its 40th anniversary, I've decided to give this ZX Spectrum a well-deserved restoration and during the restoration, we'll discuss what powers this iconic system and how we can use this system today, 40 years later, using modern televisions. So, let's begin the restoration. Before starting the restoration, let's power on the system and see if it works. Powering on the computer, we can see that there is a picture issue. The issue is coming from the power port, as the slightest of movement is causing this issue. So let's begin the restoration. We flip the spectrum over, and we are presented with four visible screws, and one screw which is hidden under this warranty seal, which we will carefully remove using IPA and a plastic splugger. This should make the process really simple and easy without ripping the seal. I carefully and slowly remove it as I intend to put the warranty seal back on the ZX Spectrum once the restoration is complete. After removing the five screws, we can now carefully lift the top shell. Before taking off the top shell completely, we need to be careful as there are two delicate rowing cables connected to the main board, which we need to remove. With the ribbon cables now disconnected, we have one final screw we have to remove, which will allow us to remove the main board from the bottom shell. With the main board now removed, let's now talk about the ZX Spectrum's hardware. During the life of the ZX Spectrum, there were many board revisions. Board revisions are often done by companies to reduce the cost by eliminating multiple chips and combining them into a single chip, or to fix issues with the previous revision. This is the issue free revision, the most common revision on the ZX Spectrum. Released in 1983, which saw improvements to the ULA and fixed manufacturing issues with the previous board revision. Let's talk about the chips which powered the system. We start with the ULA, short for Uncommitted Logic Array. It is a custom chip and is the heart of the ZX Spectrum. The ULA manages most of the interfaces between the CPU, the ROM and the RAM. And is also responsible for generating the video display signals, reading the keyboard data lines and IO functions such as the audio bleeper and cassette interface. The ZX Spectrum uses a variation of the Zilog Z80 processor found on many computers and game consoles Naming a few, the Commodore 128, the Amstrad CPC, and the Sega Master System. The Z80 is a 8-bit microprocessor, however the Z80 on the Spectrum is externally clocked by the ULA at 3.5 MHz. 
On the spectrum, there is a 14 MHz oscillator, which is regulated down to 7 MHz, which synchronizes the whole of the ULA. It is then regulated down to 3.5 MHz by the ULA, which is fed to the CPU providing its clock speed. The ZX Spectrum has a 16K ROM chip. This contains the Spectrum's basic interpreter and programming environment. Sinclair Research launched two models of the ZX Spectrum. One with 16 kilobytes of RAM and a second model with 48 kilobytes of RAM. The 48K model has two types of RAM chips installed. The two RAM types are commonly referred as the upper and lower RAM. The upper RAM is absent in the 16K model but present in the 48K models and includes 832K by 1 bit of dynamic RAM. The 32K RAM clips on the Spectrum are actually 64K RAM clips. To keep costs down, Sinclair Research used 64K clips which were actually 40 during the manufacturing stage and only used the 32K portion of the clip. We now need to remove the faceplate which houses the keyboard. With part of the plate already coming off, the process to remove it is going to be very easy. Using IPA, I slowly remove the plate and it comes off in no time. With the plate now off, I can now remove the rubber keyboard and the membranes. With all the old tape still attached to the shell, I soak the old tape with IPA and slowly remove it with a plastic splugger. And remove the old tape from the back of the keyboard faceplate. With all the tape now removed, now it's time for the ZX Spectrum's well-earned wash. With all the shells, keyboard and faceplate now cleaned, we will leave these to dry outside for a few hours. Unfortunately the white paint on the ZX Spectrum logo is completely gone, but we'll fix that in a bit. While we leave those to dry, we now focus our attention on the power port. Measuring the power, we can see we are getting some odd readings on the 12 volt and the 5 volt line on the regulator. And further inspecting the port, we can see some slight corrosion inside the port. I will replace the port with a new one and replace the 705 regulator with a new and modern version, which won't require the heatsink, which was originally placed for the 7805. So let's first work on the power port. We first put some new fresh solder on all the contacts. Using my hot air rework station set at 340 degrees, I carefully remove the old port. I clean the pads with IPA, removing all the old flux, and then install the new power port. We next focus our attention on the 705 regulator. We remove the screw holding the heatsink which will allow us to remove the heatsink and give us access to the regulator. We then put flux on the pads and then use the soldering iron with fresh solder and apply it to the contact points. With that, the regulator falls out with ease. We wick up all the remaining solder, freeing the holes and ready for the installation of our new regulator. With the regulator installed, we trim the legs and clean the old flux. We return back to the multimeter to test to see if we're getting the correct voltage readings. And it looks like we are. 
The ZX Spectrum uses an RF output. However, we're going to perform a composite video mod. We need to focus our attention on this RF modulator. First, we need to take the top lid off using a metal splugger, which should easily pop off. Once the lid is off, we can get our first look inside the modulator. We no longer need the modulator part, except for the port. Around the side of the modulator, we need to remove the two wires which connect to the main board. One wire connects to the composite signal which we need, and the other provides 5 volts, which we will no longer need. Using some tweezers and a soldering iron, we remove both wires. We'll bend the wires out of the way, as there may be a future owner in years to come who might want to restore the RF modulator. We then remove the resistor which is soldered to the connector. So we can use the composite signal with the original port, I will use a 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitor through the composite line to the port. We need to bend the capacitor so we can solder both legs. The negative leg goes to the composite port, while the positive leg goes through the composite line. We then solder both legs. And then cut the excess leg. Next, we need to replace all the capacitors which are now 40 years old. The Zenex Spectrum uses axial capacitors, however we're using radial capacitors. By bending the leads in the right position, we'll be able to match the positive and negative sides on the PCB. I will use high quality capacitors as I want this machine to last another 40 years. Slowly, one by one, we remove the old capacitors and replace them with the new capacitors. And after several hours, all the capacitors have now been replaced. And now we can give the Spectrum a good clean with IPA, removing all that old flux, dirt and grime. With the shells now dry and clean, it is now time to restore that white ZX Spectrum logo. I use a permanent white marker to match the original colour and carefully go over each letter. With the white letters all done, this really makes the ZX Spectrum good as new. We now focus our attention on putting double side tape on the shell and the keyboard plate. I'm going to use double side tape for this process. I'm going to measure and cut to size the tape to go around the keyboard plate and shell. Before we reassemble, I must also mention that unfortunately the old membrane is completely disintegrated via the connectors. So, we've got a modern replacement to install instead. This is often required when repairing ZX Spectrums. With everything ready, let's begin the reassembly.
and with the restoration complete, it's been hard work, but I am so happy with how it's turned out. A system which was not in the best shape when I bought it, restored to its former glory for its 40th anniversary. And here is the system playing some fantastic classics. What a fantastic way to celebrate the ZX Spectrum's 40th anniversary. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video and until next time, bye for now.